Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I got two rather different questions here that all have the same answer. This is from Alan Vallejo, who is NN1H, and this one is from Todd, who is KA2YNT. And they are wanting to know about what happens to the signal once it leaves the transmitter. It's got a transit, uh, maybe a tuner, uh, the coax cable, and the antenna. What happens? Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's suppose we have a very simple uh, transmitter right here. It's one of the old ones, the transistorized. Okay, this was not a problem for the old tube amps. And it's probably got some sort of load resistor or something. Anyway, this is where the load attaches. It's 50 ohms. Okay, and uh, this goes out over the coax to the antenna and connects to the antenna. All right, this is 50 ohms. It's designed, it's an amplifier, transistor amplifier, designed so that the load on the amplifier is 50 times the voltage is 50 times the current. The ratio between the voltage and the current is 50. So that's 50 ohms. All right, 50 ohms. That's the way this output is designed to work into that. Now the old tube radios were different you could play with the little pie network and get this to where it, quote, loaded the best, which nobody paid any attention to the ohms, although a lot of people used 50 ohm coax and dipoles, which are commonly said to be 50 ohms, but in actual practice aren't. Now, this is RF we're talking about here, not ordinary circuit theory. And, and this is what we call Z, or impedance. And the Z naught of most coaxial cable these days is 50 ohms, although you can buy RG6 cable for 75 ohms. It's not that much different from this. Now the antenna. This is where things get interesting. If the impedance here the, again, the ratio between the voltage and the current, I for in current intensity. Okay, if it's 100 ohms, okay, it's going to hit here and it's looking to see a ratio between the voltage and the current of 50. And it's not. It's not finding that. So what's going to happen is you're going to get some power reflected back this way. So you've got power going two different directions. Well, of course, they're additive, all right? So they're going to add up into high standing waves and so on. The standing waves will be moving if power is, in other words, the standing waves will be running if, if the mismatch is not high. If the mismatch is complete, then you get all the power back, which is not the normal situation. Let's see, you get 10 watts back. Okay, 10 watts is going to come back here, and it wants to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. So it's going to hit this output circuit right here. And transistor output circuits are notorious for being picky. So this right here will activate a protection circuit, which will reduce the power by 10 watts and only put out 40 so that the amount of power reflected adds up to something. Anyway, it's going to have to be dissipated somewhere in here. This can heat up your output amplifier and cause havoc with it, so there are protection circuits that will reduce the input power to the transistor to protect it from overloading. Now, early 
transmitters that use trans transistors do not have the protection circuit, so be very careful if you happen to have one of those early amplifiers. All the new ones have the protection circuits, so even if you shorted the output, the thing will protect itself. Now, what happens if we put a tuner in here? If we put a tuner in here, we've got to take a look at what comes back. If this is 100 ohms, your SWR is going to be 2 to 1, 100 over 50. Now, if this antenna is resonant at 100 ohms, you will still have this 2 to 1 SWR. Okay, there's no reactive current coming back, just current from the 100 ohm to 50 ohm mismatch. This is at uh, sort of a technician level at uh, maybe a general level has things like this. But in reality, the antenna is made of, of resistive elements. The, there's your, your actual um, resistance, radiation resistance, and that accounts for the power that is transmitted. There is radiation that is ohmic, that accounts for losses, copper losses in the antenna. Then there is some inductance and some capacitance. Okay. If the antenna is too short, it is capacitive and will reflect power not at the same uh, phase as the power coming in. It'll be at a different phase because it's reactive power. You store some, you send it back. So what you have to do if you have a capacitive antenna, which is an antenna that is too short, is you add inductance over here to balance this, okay? So that the, the actual X sub C and the X sub L are equal. And then the power that comes back here is in such a phase that it comes into the reactive elements in here okay, and the coil, comes into here and is reflected back this way. So it does not get reflected back into here, but it's reflected back this way. So if you were to immediately stop transmitting, which, by the way, creates a transient on the line, um, you would get a little bit of what's called ringing as this stuff dissipates. But it dissipates very quickly in microseconds, and so you're not going to hear the ringing that is happening here. Where it's dissipated is in the radiation resistance and the ohmic resistance, and also in the ohmic resistance of the cable, okay? So you're heating the antenna and heating the cable, all right? So it doesn't go back and forth. If you stop transmitting, this will go boop, boop, boop. You know, within a few cycles, it'll, uh, it will have gone away. Now, now I, I want to show something here that may be a little weird for you. Let's take an antenna that is resonant at 7,200 kilohertz on 40 meters, but its resonance is 100 ohms. So you're putting a transmitter into here, and let's just say this is the tuner, okay? And you've got a 50 ohm cable. What's going to happen? You're going to get a reflection, okay? Now, let us suppose that this cable is too, or this antenna is too short. It is therefore capacitive. So some of this that's going to go back is going to be held for a little bit and then sent back over here to the tuner, which hopefully will turn it around and send it back here. What we're going to find is that at the frequency of resonance, the SWR in this case will be 2 to 1. But your lowest SWR will be at a different frequency. 
Now, the reactance here is going to be non-resistive. It's going to be, uh, or it will be partly resistive, but it also has a vector component of uh, capacitive or inductive reactance, okay? That might be your lowest SWR. Where do you operate your transmitter? The answer is here, at the lowest SWR. This is the least amount of power that would be dissipated back in here. Remember, only resistors can dissipate power. So you've got the radiation resistance, you've got the ohmic resistance, which can dissipate power, both of those, and you've got the ohmic resistance uh, here in the cable. So you heat your cable. Now, if you have a situation where the um, <clears throat> resonant frequency is really weird, and the situation that sticks out to me is the so-called 43-foot vertical, which had a vogue about 10 years ago. Okay, dead radials, of course. You need lots of radials to make this thing work. And then the antenna tuner goes right here. Let me put that in orange. The antenna tuner is right here. You've got a cable back to the transmitter, but this sees 50 ohms up to the tuner. The tuner connects directly to the uh, vertical element and to the radials. There is no transmission line where there's a standing wave. And so a system like this can still be very efficient even though um, the SWR is quite high, uh, which it is on 43-foot verticals. Okay? So there you have it. Uh, we've taken a look at uh, antennas, how the power goes back and forth between the tuner and so on. There isn't enough ringing in there to be audible because the it's died away by the time the human ear even gets around to noticing. And uh, the bottom line here is try to make your antennas as close to resonance as is reasonable, okay? A dipole is not going to be 50 ohms unless it's at the perfect height. And even at the um, half wavelength height, it's closer to about 70 ohms than it is to 50. 70 ohms, you're only going to get about a 1.4 to 1 SWR. Okay, so um, there you have it. I hope that uh, proved helpful. Um, I'd like to say a special thank you to Michael Krell, uh, KF5NFR, who is a recent patron, just became a patron of the channel. Uh, you too can become a patron of the channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. This is a way that you can support this channel on a continuing basis so that uh, I can continue to bring you uh, these videos. Pay assistance, get camera audio equipment, other things, and so on. Buy things that uh, I can uh, review, and so on. So... Thank you all very much, and until we next meet, 73.